Great. Um, so my name is James Pepper. I'm the chair of the Vermont Cannabis Control Board. Today is May 23rd, 2022, and I call this meeting to order. A few updates before we turn to the agenda. Um, licensing, um, as promised, we're going to be issuing some more operational licenses today. I think um, three in all, and all um, are social equity applicants. Um, we have a number of licenses that are very close, um, but are still incomplete for one reason or another. Um, we've been in touch with these applicants and hopefully um, we'll have these issues dealt with uh, for our next meeting. Last week, I talked a little bit about the amount of work that our staff has undertaken to really build the systems um, that got us to this point and will allow us to pick up the pace even further when we have more, um, more staff. But I think it's important to put what we're doing here in Vermont into a little bit broader context. Um, Matt, the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission issued its first license um, 14 months after the board was initially seated. They issued it to a large 20,000 square foot indoor cultivator that already had a licensed medical dispensary. And then after that, they issued roughly six to seven licenses a month, um, almost exclusively to large companies that were already licensed medical dispensaries, meaning that they already had all of their banking and insurance and all the other regulatory requirements worked out ahead of time. Um, New Jersey, they issued their first set of licenses 17 months after their commission was appointed. Um, they did it to 13, their initial outlay was 13 licenses, but these were again all to existing medical dispensaries that were already operating. Um, you know, both of these commissions also have vastly more resources available to them than we do. You know, here in Vermont, we were seated on April 19th, 2021. Um, 13 months after that, almost to the date, we issued our first license, and we're about to do three more today. Um, and we'll hopefully have a handful more by the end of the month. And we've pre-qualified over 100 people. So we are on pace with these other states. Um, you could add in Colorado, California, Michigan, uh, Montana, all of them kind of worked at the same pace. Um, and we're doing it by not issuing licenses to existing cannabis businesses, but to social equity applicants and small cultivators. So I know people are anxious to get licensed. Um, please, please don't take out your frustrations on our staff. Um, they didn't write the rules. They didn't write the insurance requirements or banking requirements. Um, there are people that are here working as hard as they can to answer your questions and help you successfully complete your applications. Um, thankfully, more, more help is on the way. Um, I know people aren't familiar with the sort of internal bureaucracy of state government, but it takes literally weeks to actually create a position after it's been authorized. Um, there's strict rules around how long um, we have to post those positions and before we can even begin to talk to qualified applicants. Um, and of course, if you want to have any sort of inclusive hiring practice, you can't rush um, that process or the interview process. So um, as we do with everything here, we need to balance the kind of need to move quickly with the need to do this job safely, effectively, and equitably. So again, I just urge everyone who's watching to exercise patience with our staff and recognize the stress that they are under. Um, everyone here, is at capacity um, and everyone is working as fast as they possibly can and no amount of kind of cajoling them can really change that in fact it probably only slows them down uh waiver requests um this is kind of an issue that's starting to be a common theme um so i'd like to say just a few words about waivers um the board was handed the framework for the adult use market by the legislature um, it included seven key priorities, um, things like promoting social equity, promoting small cultivators, but also things like environmental sustainability and consumer protection. We had attempted to draft the least restrictive regulatory environment that adhered to those priorities. 
And we had um, 150 public meetings and took extensive public comment throughout that process. I know um, there are things in our regulations that people wish were not there. And that there are things that are difficult to achieve, um, mostly because of the kind of federal status of cannabis. But everything that we did um, in our rules uh, is related directly to an underlying statutory requir requirement that was given to us by the legislature. You know, we know here that banking is inaccessible or unaffordable. We know that insurance premiums are artificially inflated uh, because it's a cannabis business and the policies are very limited. Um, we know that security requirements come at a cost. We know that these are barriers to entry, um, but they're also the cost of doing business for any operation um, that's open to the public. They protect you, they protect your neighbors, and they create a safe market. The board um, has identified a few areas of our regulations where we will entertain waiver requests on a case-by-case -case basis. However, the key threshold question to any waiver request is, what did you do to try to comply with the regulation before you asked for a waiver? If the answer is nothing, or you heard that banking was expensive um, from someone else, that's not enough. Um, we're not gonna consider your waiver request. We need to see that you made a good faith effort at trying to comply with the regulations. The next question that we look at um, when considering a waiver request is, why is this regulation excessive for your specific business? You know, liability insurance covers losses or injuries to third parties, including your neighbors, first responders, our inspectors. Um, if your risk is low, um, either because of the nature of your business or the type of license you're seeking or some other reason, you can let us know that and um, we can consider a waiver, but without more information um, about your specific business, we really don't have enough to grant a waiver. And of course, there are things that we're not authorized to waive, things like compliance with building codes and fire safety. Um, I mentioned a few times, fire safety needs to talk to every prospective licensee. If your operation is not within their jurisdiction, they'll issue you a letter to that effect, but we want to see that letter. Um, if you are within their jurisdiction, they will work with you um, and your business uh, to make sure it's compliant. We can't issue you a license until we know that your business is safe for the general public, including your employees. If you're under fire safety's jurisdiction, um, you'll need to let us know that you've met their requirements and we'll be checking with them to make sure that you have. This is not meant to be onerous. Um, you know, Landon Wheeler, he was out sick last Friday, but it's my understanding that he is up to date on issuing all of these jurisdictional letters and that he has everyone who's reached out to him moving through their pipeline currently. Um, so if you're thinking about issuing a license, you haven't talked or thinking about seeking a license and you haven't talked to fire safety, you have to talk to Landon Wheeler. Um, it's landon.wheeler at vermont.gov or his cell phone 802-216. 0501. And other than that, we just have to approve the minutes. Um, Julie and Kyle, you had a chance to look at them from 516? Yep. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so next on the agenda is review staff recommendations on pre qualification and license applications. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a number of pre-qualification applicants uh, before you today, 18. Um, so I will start going through those. You can see that today we've got five cultivators, five manufacturers, 
one wholesale and seven retail pre-qualification applicants up for your review. Um, and as is true every week, uh, these applicants have demonstrated compliance with rules 141 and 142, and staff have deemed them to be suitable for pre-qualification. Um, first, a little look at the numbers up here. Um, you can see we've got a uh, total number of pre-qualified applicants is up to, um, we've got 105 cultivators, one testing lab, 13 manufacturers, four wholesalers, and 22 retailers. So we've had 145 um, applicants that have been pre-qualified so far. So I'll move into um, the submission numbers and license types. So we have submission number 214, who um, is up for retail, submission 215, wholesale, submission 62, for retail, submission 424 for a tier two manufacturer, submission 183 for tier two mixed cultivation, submission 547 up for retail. There's a couple of random yellow highlight marks in this document. They are meaningless. Please ignore them. Submission 384B for a tier two manufacturer, submission 110 for retail, submission 7 for retail, submission 509 for tier 1 outdoor cultivation, submission 487B for a tier 3 manufacturer, submission 487C for retail, submission 415 for tier 3 mixed use cultivation, submission number 90 for retail, Submission number 102B for tier one manufacturing. Submission number 496 um, for tier one indoor cultivation. Submission number 193 for tier two manufacturing. And last, lastly, submission number 93 for a tier three outdoor cultivation. Um, there are two pre-qualification applicants in this list. Um, that do have a presumptively disqualifying offense on their criminal history record. Um, the board, the staff is recommending requalification for these applicants, but um, I just think we could move into executive session to discuss um, these two particular applicants. Can I do that now? I think we should do that now. Okay. We do a motion ready. I move that we go into executive session to consider confidential attorney client communication made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. And that executive session is required because pre premature general public knowledge regarding such communication has clearly placed the board at substantial disadvantage. Is there a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so we're out of executive session. It's 1126. Um, the board was uh, looking at two cases for pre-qualification um, where the applicants had presumptively disqualifying offenses, and we were looking at whether or not they overcame those based upon the factors in our rule. Um, and I think we decide we will vote on this uh, as part of the entire package, but I think we decided in executive session that those two cases, the, the applicants did overcome presumptive disqualification and should be eligible for pre-qualification. But we will vote on that in a second. Okay, so I'm going to move on now to the full license applications. Here is the table uh, with numbers of application status. Um, you can see we have 125 outdoor, 47 indoor, small or tiers one and two cultivation applications in the pipeline. Fifteen outdoor and mixed tiers three and up. Nine indoor tiers three and up. We have two testing labs in the pipeline. One that has been deemed incomplete. That's in the submitted status. And you can see we've got two integrated that are in the received status. There's the complete number. 
numbers there for up to 200 applications in the in the door. So today we have three uh, businesses being recommended for licensure. And those are as follows. And the staff is recommending that each of these businesses be approved for a license um, based on the staff's deeming them suitable for licensure and um, the fact that they each of them have demonstrated compliance with rules 1.4 and 1.5. And I should note that all three of these um, also have social equity status. The next part of the register is um, to approve some for social equity status, and there is an overlap here. So um, some of these are up for licensure and approval of their social equity status at the same meeting. We can move to that next. So here's our social equity license application numbers. We have 37 in total. Um, so recommendations for social equity status, we have condition number 160, the um, tier one small indoor cultivator, condition number 233, tier one uh, mixed cultivator. And both of these applicants uh, meet the criteria set forth in the rule. As a socially disadvantaged individual is defined in 113Q. And lastly, we have one um, recommendation of denial for social equity status, and that's submission number 76, seeking a license for tier one uh, indoor cultivation. And staff are um, recommending that this applicant have their social equity status be denied because they do not meet the criteria for socially disadvantaged individual. Um, this person um, does not meet any of the criteria set forth in rule 113Q. Okay, so how would you like us to vote on these? Is there a sequence that we should do um, or should we uh, just accept all staff recommendations? Um, so I think that you can accept all staff recommendations as one package if you'd like. If there's any, if you'd like to have any discussion on any of these pieces, I think it's fine to vote as an individual sections. Like if you want to just vote on the pre-qualification applicants, that's fine. If you'd like to have more discussion of any of the portions of the staff recommendations, but I think it's okay to vote on all of them as a package. Seems to me we should do the social equity status separately, especially because there's a denial. And we could, I think, do the prequal and full license. I have good. one question about the denial, mm -hmm. just for the benefit of the public. What happens with that application now? So this application is going to continue to be reviewed in the order it was received. I do believe it's an applicant that is. Um, in incomplete status, they've had an incomplete letter sent out. So um, we will continue to review that application and work on it in order. I don't, it will not be put to the back of the line. Okay. Thank you. So um, is there a motion to approve, uh, to accept the staff recommendations with respect to the social equity status? Yes, I move that the board accept each of the recommendations of social, social equity status as presented by staff in this meeting. Is that, do we need to do a separate? I mean, that talking. phrasing covers yeah. this because the recommendation is two acceptances in a, in a denial. Um, so that covers it. You okay. can specify it more, more. You could say it more specifically, but what you said recovers the, okay. what was presented. I'll second your motion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any uh, conversation at all about these? Okay, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great, now I think we should um, move to our, I think we can do both the prequal and the full applications as one. So let me 
Is there a motion to approve staff recommendations with respect to the pre qualification <laughs> licenses and operating licenses? I move that the board uh, accept each of the recommendations for pre qualification, including those that were discussed in executive session and licensing approval as presented by staff in this meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Um, I think all we have left is public comment. So um, we'll handle it the same way we always do. Uh, if you have a public comment and you join via the link, um, the video link, please raise your virtual hands and we will call on you in the, in the order that you raise your hands. And then after we get through those, we'll move to people that join via the phone. So um, if you have a public comment, please feel free to raise your hand now. Uh, Jason Powell's up first. Hi there. Um, I was just wondering if you have a decided order of review for the applications after the social equity status applications. If you're going to start with tier one and outdoor mixed cult cultivation licenses first, or it's purely on the order of submission or completion. Thanks. Thanks, Jason. Dave. Hey everyone, um, thank you for approving one of my clients today. Um, very excited. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that only two uh, testing labs have applied. And I was wondering whether you all have thought about what you might be able to do to, um, to encourage more applications in in that very important part of the supply chain. Um, and uh, I mean, you guys got, I think you, you had nine prequals um, for that category. And, you know, there's a whole host of uh, hemp certified testing labs and maybe there's some outreach that, that could be done. I, I don't know, but um, I'd be really, really worried. Uh, in fact, I am really, really worried about the paucity of, of applications for testing labs. I'm sure you guys are too. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Anyone else who joined via the link, uh, raise your virtual hand. Um, Here you frogs. Hey guys, um, I was just wondering if you could comment to maybe how um, you're going through reviewing licenses, whether you know you look at the social equity ones first and then make you know letters whether they're missing something or whatever and then they're moving on to the non-social equity uh say outdoor or mixed um cultivators um just kind of concerned i mean here we are end of may i submitted my application first of may um and yet i haven't been contacted with anything that i'm missing or anything like that so i'm, I'm wondering if you could speak to what you're seeing as a turnaround um, whether you're dealing with things right now that we're in April and that there's a, a four week lag or, or something to that to kind of give us some hope or some kind of idea of whether I'm going to have plants in the ground this year or if it's going to be June or July. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Austin. Hi, uh, thanks for everything you're doing. Um, I would like to uh, reiterate what the last person just said about, I'm assuming for everyone except for the person um, or the two outdoor growers you approved today are not going to be growing for this season. And I was wondering if in going forward with applications and approvals, if there are some later in the year, if outdoor growers will be kind of grant, if they're going to be expected to pay for a, a license fee for a year in which they're not growing. Um, but that's my comment. Thank you. Thanks, Austin. Red Clover Analytics. Hey, folks, how you doing? One more time. Thank you very much for uh, all your time, all you and all you're doing right now. Um, the only comment I would ha I have is um, 
Um, we are still awaiting a little bit more on, on recommendations for testing limits and all that stuff. Um, missing things like uh, water water content uh, and a couple others. Uh, just uh, comment that well, we would like to see more of that so we can prepare ourselves for what's coming. Uh, again, uh, we appreciate your time and everything you do for us. Thank you. Thank you. So again, feel free to raise your virtual hand if you have a public comment. If you join via the phone, you can hit star six to unmute yourself. All right, I guess I will close the public comment window. Um, you know, just to respond to a few things that we heard, uh, the order of review, we have guidance up on our website, which explains the order of review. Um, we do have the ability, I mean, we start with social equity and, um, kind of women and minority owned businesses. And then, um, you know, at first statute, we also have to prioritize people with an existing medical dispensary in good standing. Um, you know, then we move to general applications in the order that they were received. We do have the ability to move people around in the queue if um, it's for the kind of proper functioning of the market, which I think outdoor cultivators uh, could likely make an argument that they, that they could be moved. Um, so, you know, generally speaking, we're trying to be fair, recognizing some of the um, kind of conditions in Vermont that require us to prioritize uh, outdoor cultivation. Um, with respect to testing labs, um, you know, we do have the ability, we said it many times to waive uh, people that are certified as uh, hemp farmers through the Agency of Agriculture um, into the program um, without any additional um, requirements. So, you know, when it comes to things that the board can do, I think we've kind of created a glide path uh, for testing labs. Um, and, you know, the more the better, of course, but you know, there's only so much that the board can do to kind of encourage more businesses to join the market. Um, so other than that, any other comments, Julie or Kyle, you'd like to make? I was just going to say what, what you just mentioned, we did write into our rules that if you're licensed through the Agency of Agriculture to test any of the parameters, one or all, um, you got a glide path. So I don't think that the numbers that Bryn displayed were a complete accurate depiction of where our testing labs are, I would submit and hope anyways. Um, with regards to the comments from Red Clover, all of those limits that you referred to are either in guidance or those action limits are in our rules. So I would encourage you to go back and look at rule two um, and then guidance we have on other applicable action limits as it relates to testing. I was just looking on our website for the no, testing. All right. They're all there. <laughs> and you know, we get it, we're moving as fast as we can here at the board. Folks need to meet us halfway and get us complete applications. I know some folks don't know if they're incomplete or not, but hey, frost warnings are still in effect for most of the state anyways from an outdoor perspective. So, you know, we're we're of understanding. Oh, yeah, and I would just say that, you know, the, every time we bring on a new person, you know, our processes speed up by that much. And we're in the midst of hiring, I think, at least three licensing positions currently. So that's, uh, you know, the team that we have, in place, not only had to review the applications, they had to build the procedures to review them. And so now that those are in place, things can move um, more quickly, keeping in mind that we are currently outpacing what um, I think New Jersey and Massachusetts and a few other states have done. So um, we're I, doing, yeah. I think we're doing it the right way. Yeah. All right. Well, other than that, um, I think we can adjourn the meeting. Um, thank you all for joining us. Thanks for the input and thanks to our staff as always for your tireless work.